Welcome to Camaraderie, where your host is a white American male photographer who just loves his coffee. Isn't that so delightfully original? Today's episode is sponsored by Arm & Hammer, the best a man can get. Wait, that's that's the wrong brand. Real quick interruption from the future here. Um, I Well, I'm not the future. That's He's a, he's a musical artist. Um, I am not him. I am me, and this me has, uh, during the course of making this video, my channel hit 4,000 subscribers, which is just wild to me. I think I was at, like, I think I just hit 1,000 around this time last year, or I was, like, really close to it, and, uh, yeah, y'all are silly for subscribing to this channel. Um, so I just wanted to say, before we got any further into the video... Thank you. And, um, <laughs> yeah, no, I don't, I don't have anything else special to say. It's just cool. And it's awesome. And, uh, yeah, I guess we'll, I guess for my way of saying thank you, um, please enjoy this intro. Caffeine, caffeine Begging of you, please give me a buzz <laughs> Caffeine, 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 caffeine Please won't you develop my film That's pretty good. Let's go on to the verse. are beyond compare with silver laden images so you've seen the title of the video by now um yeah today i'm gonna be developing with coffee this idea has been percolating for a little while now and um yeah i decided to finally go ahead and pull the trigger thanks to um somebody who commented on one of my videos gatsby gatsby 53 Gets gets B ye five three. Thank you. Uh, I've heard of. I'm pretty sure I've run across this method of developing film before. But your comment kind of got things brewing. Um, really got this project off the ground. Uh, give me the give me the the uh, kick in the pants to do it. Um, so here we are. There are a lot of different forums and websites and just general resources that I consulted to uh, during the making of this video, but specifically a lot of thanks goes to cathanol.org and fieldmag.com, um, two resources that really helped me out, specifically in the development process different recipes i'll get into all that later but um yeah so if you want to follow along i put the links in the description um below the video i also managed to find the actual research paper that uh, this all kind of started from my hair is why is it it's like flat what is it doing I don't know. There we go. That's better. Back in 1995 at the Rochester Institute of Technology, Dr. Scott Williams and his technical photographic chemistry class were on the hunt for non-traditional developers. Specifically, they were trying to nail down an understanding of the selective developer molecule. That's the thing that reduces silver halides into metallic silver, but only those silver halides which have a latent image on them after they've been exposed to light. So the selective developer mod module molecule is um, the thing that, you know, makes film development and just film negatives in general work. They tried everything from various soaps to ascorbic acid, uh, which that's, that's um, vitamin C for those of us like myself who are not so chemistrily inclined, even all the way up up to and including hydrogen peroxide until they found that tea and especially coffee gave them some positive results um, or negative results. 
positive. <laughs> Basically, coffee makes the whole thing work because it's got, uh, among other things, um, contained within it a group of molecules called phenols. One of those phenols, phenols? Phen well, no, phenol is like a thing. Phenol, phenol is like a little seed, right? Phenols. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say phenols. If that's wrong, I'm sorry. One of these phenols is caffeic acid. Caffeic? Ca science, man, I love science, but some of the words I'm not, they're not exactly intuitive. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I'm saying them right, but I don't know. Anyways, one of these phenols is called caffeic acid. Uh, that's the antioxidant part of coffee and tea, whereas the similarly named caffeine is the psychoactive stimulant that makes me function. Caffeic acid makes the whole thing work because it's pretty similar. It's basically a, a molecule called catechol. Caffeic acid is essentially just catechol, but with a few little extra bits thrown on there. That's important because as this was a photography chemistry class, they already knew that catechol uh, was an effective known photographic developer. Uh, so they they were like, all right, cool, we're on to something here. They got better results with coffee than they did with tea, but there was, um, still just wasn't quite like there. So they went about going through, like, you know, doing science and figuring it out and just optimizing everything to, you know, they were doing science and they got it better, I guess it really is what I'm trying to say here. Basically, they just had to neutralize the acidity of the coffee itself, and they did that by adding in washing soda, also known as soda ash and a few other things. It's, it's sodium carbonate. Uh, not bicarbonate, because that's baking soda, but yeah, washing soda. Throw that in there, that neutralizes the acidity of the coffee and then they didn't do this but throughout the decades since people have started adding vitamin c to like ascorbic acid like straight vitamin c to uh, this mixture and that shortens the development time by quite a bit because it does something sciencey with um the mixture but hey you know throw all of that stuff that you might already have in your house together and you've got caffeinol so i didn't have like any of this stuff i mean i have coffee but that's for drinking not for developing um i wanted instant coffee because that's what all the recipes called for um so i was off to wegman's uh, because it's simply the best grocery store around i'm sorry ingles um but you haven't expanded down the east part of this state, so uh, what do you want me to say? Wegmans is the best, around here at least. Grab the world's finest instant coffee. Found my way to the cleaning supplies aisle. Supply aisle, if you will. And then spent way too long looking for vitamin C powder. Luckily, there was a vitamin shop uh, pretty much just across the street, and after an alacritous acquisition of ascorbic acid in hand, I made my way back home to start processing. Now, it seems like uh, pretty much everybody has a slightly different take on what's the best caffeinol recipe. Um, so I kind of like cobbled something together from taking like the recipe from caffeinol.org uh, uh, with the like actual development instructions from fieldmag.com. Just gonna mix all this in some tap water and see if we can get some usable film out of it. Okay, right, so first I need to get some room temperature water, which is generally around, like, honestly, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it to, try and get it to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, 20 degrees Celsius is actually how I normally do it. All right, so we got one liter, you know, thousand milliliters, one liter of 19.9 uh, .9 degree Celsius tap water. So 18 teaspoons for this recipe, leveled off. One. 
two, three, and 18. <laughs> this is so silly. Yeah, I might need something to stir this with, so uh, thankfully, I used to be a bartender. I wonder how much caffeine is in this. I'm using this much because I've got three rolls that I'm trying to develop at once. Whether or not that's a smart idea, probably not, especially since this is my first time. Um, <laughs> but it's just fun. It's fun to me, why not take some risks, you know? Um, I don't even remember what's on these rolls, so anything I get out of it is just gonna be a nice bonus. Three teaspoons. Vitamin C. One. This thing ain't gonna catch no colds. All right, mix this up. Probably should have done the washing soda first, just so I could see when that's actually dissolved. Probably should have added the coffee in last, because that dissolves pretty quickly. I don't know how fast the washing soda will dissolve, or how easily it will dissolve in, uh, what do you call this, room temperature water. Right. Give this another wiper -roo. Now we add some washing soda. Now this recipe I found it said like 12 teaspoons of washing soda or 32 if it's crystalline crystalline I, I, I mean these look like crystals so I guess that's what I'm doing <laughs> I don't know I guess maybe this comes in concentrate somewhere I don't know man one two this is gonna take forever Five. One, two, five. That's how counting works. And 32. Right. You're probably not supposed to uh, touch this with my hands, but that's fine. All right, so stir all this up until I can't see any more grains at the very little bottom floating through there, and then probably let it sit to let the bubbles debubbleify um, and then then we'll get to develop or at least put some brown <laughs> liquid into my uh, film tank whether or not it develops only science knows that's gonna be a lot of flex mm. Do I have any cheesecloth that I could pour this through? A lot of fine mesh strainer. Mm. It doesn't smell great. It smells kind of like fish. Yeah, there's still, still some grains. Oh, wait. Hang on. All right. This is what I'm going to do. All right, so... I remembered that there's a little fine mesh strainer on here. What we can do, a little fine mesh strainer right there. What we can do is, I'm gonna stir this up as much as I can and then transport it over to here. Should uh, capture all the uh, little crystals that haven't dissolved yet. And honestly, I'm thinking 32 teaspoons is probably way too much, but that's what I saw, so I don't know. That's what I saw, dude. Told you I used to be a bartender. God, that really doesn't smell great. Nice, I don't see any crystals in there. Sweet. All right, so I'm gonna let 
these bubbles uh, simmer down and then uh, we will get to developing but while that is uh, simmering down gonna put this in a little pre-wash just some distilled water that I have right over here <laughs> frankly it all seems a seemed a little bit excessive uh, I was just following the recipe that I found on caffeinol.org but it wasn't for the exact film stock that I was using so I don't know I could have been way off but I had my mixture and I started developing all right moment of truth um Definitely negatives. Those are negatives. <laughs> How cool is that? That's wild. All right, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, just run a little bit of photo flow through these. All right. That's so cool. That's so cool. Oh, these are from DC. Oh, I probably should have. Uh... I should have actually like developed these how I normally would because this was a great trip but um, this is so cool man this is so cool let's see let's see how this is gonna look right. yeah those are those are negatives man so does, does that look worse no yes dude look at that <laughs> that's so crazy man yeah three for three nothing weird happened i mean there might still be some uh you know issues that i find while i'm in post-processing like scanning area but right now this this is good enough for me man that's that's so cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> coffee <laughs> So I had real life negatives developed from coffee. That's so cool. Of course, I wouldn't really know how successful I was until I got them scanned in. So I threw up a quick Hail Jeffrey, fired up the Plus Tech and got to work. Once I got my silver fast workflow to a point where I was fairly happy with the results, I was, um, fairly happy with the results. The most immediately noticeable characteristic of developing with caffeinol is the grain. All the grain. The grainiest grains. Now in my research I'd read that the caffeinol process does tend to emphasize the grain, but I wasn't expecting this level of grain. If I had to guess I'd say this largely has to do with the agitation step of developing. Uh, when I'm using a standard developer, I normally agitate for 10 seconds every minute, but the instructions that I was following said to agitate three times a minute. I think I may have overdone it because a lot of the pictures I've seen from other people using caffeinol don't look nearly this grainy. It could also be the potentially excessive amounts of everything I used when mixing the caffeinol solution, but I just don't. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, your guess is as good as mine, but I'm pretty sure it was a combination of at least those two things. Regardless, I'm quite pleased with how these pictures turned out. I would have liked to see a bit more crispness and a bit more retention of detail in the shadows and highlights, but these were developed with coffee and I think that's awesome. Caffeinol definitely has a different look to it from my normal Ilfasol 3 development. Keeping this in mind, and with a lot more experimentation to refine my proportions and methods, I could absolutely see myself using caffeinol in the future when I'm going for a certain look. 
I'm certainly not abandoning the my standard development process, um, but it, this is a nice tool to have, especially if, uh, I don't know, maybe I run out of developer and have to get it developed right then and can't get to the camera shop, or, you know, if I happen to at some point live in a place without a local camera shop that I can just, you know, pop down to and get some whatever chemical, uh, this, I would absolutely in a pinch use this or if i'm just looking for that specific look i'm in the home stretch here just wanted to say a couple more things before the video is over uh but you know gotta, gotta refuel mm. straight cathanol another reason that i've seen some people online saying that you might want to just abandon standard developing chemicals altogether is that cathanol is more environmentally friendly than your dc 76s dc 76 d 76 and hc 110s and ilfasols and you know all the million other developing chemicals that are out there i'm not so sure how based in reality that is on the face of it it makes intuitive sense you're using simple ingredients that you may already have in your house that's that's like the whole idea behind what the class of 1995 at the Rochester Institute of Technology was trying to accomplish. Simple stuff around your house, a non-traditional developer. They did it. But I have no idea how environmentally friendly um, Folger's coffee farming practices are uh, on this signs don't look good in in that there are no signs like they no um fair trade or single origin certifications or anything like that and while arm and hammer does seem to be fairly environmentally conscious i have no idea what goes into manufacturing pure ascorbic acid and then if you factor in the transportation and packaging costs of three products instead of just the one that you would get with a standard you know bottle of developer i'm not so sure if the more environmentally friendly claim of caffeinol really holds up to scrutiny I, I think it you just need i would need more rigorous and vigorous investigation um before i would be comfortable fully endorsing that aspect of caffeinol it could very well be that Caffeinol is actually more environmentally friendly. I just don't know. Either way, this was a super fun experiment. It reminded me of why I got into shooting film and then into developing it myself in the first place. Um, <laughs> like, is it is it science? Is it art? Is it both? I don't know. <laughs> it's just fun. <laughs> um, plus, like, having uh, complete control over all of the variables makes it a really personally fulfilling experience for me. That's all I've got for you today. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, I did. I had a lot of fun. I think I've said that about, like, five times already now. Um, let me know in the comments if you've tried any alternative processing and what your results were. and I, Like, did it totally change your entire processing process um yeah, like i would love to hear your stories and i don't know drop a link to your do people still use Flickr? i don't um you know if you've got some of your stuff online with um alternative processing involved uh let me know i'd love to take a look at it and i don't know maybe get an idea for something that I could try. I'll be on this side of the lens in the next video, so until then, see ya.